Hi, I'm Dan from Yukon HK, and today we'll be doing a Norton equivalence circuit. So the whole goal with Norton equivalent is it's kind of a complement to Thevenin equivalent, in which instead of having a voltage source and then a resistor, you have a current source and a resistor in parallel. Um, and the whole goal is to find the Norton equivalent across here, across our 8 ohm resistor. So what we're going to start off with is first finding the voltage right here, as we know, uh, as we call it VOC. So we'll be using node voltage method to do this. So seeing one node right here, which I'll name V1. This will be our V2. Seeing a nice big node here to be our ground. All right. So I'll start off with V1. So for the equation for V1, we have negative 4 because we have 4 amps entering V1. Uh, if we had the convention for node voltage is any current entering is negative. So we'll have that plus V1 plus 6 volts. divided by, oh, this should have been 3, 3 plus 1, which gives us 4 ohms. So that takes care of this branch and this branch. Down here we have V1 over 1 ohm. Here we have V1 minus 12 over 4. And lastly, V1 minus V2 over 2. That all equals 0. And I just realized it should have been V1 plus 6 minus V2. My apologies. Because as we see here, V1 and V2 are connected through this top branch. So it'll be, minus, or it'll be plus 6 because we're encountering the negative terminal here first, and minus V2. So that is our equation for V1. Now here for V2, it's a bit simpler. So we have V2 over 8, because of this branch here, V2 minus V1 over 2. And same deal here as before. So here we'll have V2 minus 6 minus V1. And that's the same as before, all over 4 ohms. Now, when we simplify this into a matrix, so. We'll simplify this into a matrix of 2, negative 3, negative 6, and negative 7. And from here, it's just it's a bit of linear algebra to solve. Now, all we care about here is V2. We don't really care about what V1 is in this example because V2 here will be our open circuit voltage, which is all we want. So that's all I'm going to focus on here. And here we have V2 equals 2.75 volts. So we'll need to use this to find our Norton resistance. So now we have to focus on finding our short circuit current. So I'm going to replace our resistor here with a short. And we'll get forward on working, we'll move forward on finding that I. So when I replace this resistor with a short, what happens now is V2 is now connected directly to ground. So V2 is just 0 volts. 
So the only thing we can find here is v1. So let's write some expressions for v1. We have negative 4, same as before, plus v1 over 1. v1 minus v2, in which v2 is 0, so it'll just be v1 minus 0, v1 over 2 ohms. Then v1 plus 6 minus 0. My apologies. This should have been 6 volts. Our second voltage is our 2.75. All right, and from now, the bulk of the work is actually done. So to find the current flowing down here, ISC. So the current flowing down here comes both down this way from V1 and up from this branch and down. So we only really have to include those two branches because current this way uh, we don't care about. Current this way we don't care about. It's just these two ways. So we'll have V1 over 2 plus V1 plus 6 over 4. And so we just plug in our value of 2.75 volts for V1, and we end up with an ISC of 3.56 amperes. All right, so we're even closer to finish now. All that's left is to find our resistance, and that is just a simple division. It will be our, our, our R Norton is our VOC over ISC, VOC being 6 volts. we end up with 1.65 ohms, 1.685 ohms. All right, and so our final drawing, I'll draw it under here, will be just as follows. An independent current source with a parallel resistor and two terminals leading out. All right, so to finish up what we did here and summarize, we first performed a node voltage analysis with these two nodes, only really caring about V2 because that's where we're taking the equivalent across. Then we shorted our 8 ohm resistor to find our ISC. To do that, we had to find this voltage, V1, using node voltage, and then found the current flowing through here as it related to V1. Once we had that, that gave us our short circuit current. Our Norton resistance was just our open circuit voltage divided by our short circuit current, and our current was what we found here. And that's really all there is to Norton. It's not any more difficult than Thevenin, but it's just as useful. This is Dan from, U from UConn HKN signing off.